general education programs should give students the opportunity to receive a well-rounded education, one that ensures that they leave college with a sturdy foundation of knowledge that isn't exclusive to their major. Of course, a sturdy foundation of knowledge doesn't mean that students need to be exposed to every subject under the sun. That is both impractical and falls short of the purpose of a general education. A good general education should supply students with a big picture understanding of the most essential subjects. It should also form students to be responsible citizens and professionals. Unfortunately, many college administrators have lost sight of what a good general education should look like. Not only that, but their attempts to reinvent the wheel have stripped general education programs of their important role in students' education. Hi, I'm Shannon Watkins, and this is A Higher Education Moment, a video series presented by the James G. Martin Center for Academic Renewal. Today, we're going to examine the purposes and key components of a good general education curriculum. What are the essential subjects that students should be exposed to in college? To answer that question, Let's first clarify the central goals of general education. First, it should teach students how to reason well and concisely. Secondly, it should give them a firm grounding in the ideas, culture, and history of the world in which they live. Since many college graduates will be the country's future leaders, it's pivotal that they be intellectually, civically, and culturally well-formed. When those goals are met, the benefits to both students and society are numerous, and it should give students the foundation they need in order to specialize later. Research in cognitive science has shown that students learn new subjects by building on what they already know. General education must provide a firm foundation for future learning. Here are some of the core subjects of a good general education program. Math, composition, economics, American history, science, and literature from the Western canon. A serious study of these subjects, with a few other additions, will also ensure that students leave college with the soft and hard skills needed for any number of careers. While nearly everyone can agree that students should learn to become deep thinkers, there is much less consensus on what ideas, culture, and history should be prioritized in the curriculum if any at all. Because of that disagreement, many college administrators have come to the conclusion that it doesn't matter what specific subjects students study, as long as the courses fulfill some vague or purely skills-focused learning outcomes. As a result, rather than gaining a core of essential knowledge, students at many colleges and universities are free to choose from hundreds of highly specialized topics to fulfill a single requirement. For example, UNC Chapel Hill students can fulfill their history requirement by taking a course in either Japanese tea culture or American constitutional history since 1876. While both could be interesting, those topics surely aren't equally essential for a student's education. Not all knowledge is equal in importance, and students are just that, students. They need direction and guidance if they are to leave college as well-rounded thinkers and civically engaged citizens. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you wish to comment or learn more, feel free to contact my colleagues or me at www.jamesgmartin.center. Thank you.